Regulators. We regulate any trimming that goes on in this property. And we're dang good at it too. But you can't just be any geek off the street. You gotta be handy with the steel. If you know what I mean. You gotta earn your key. Regulators! Mount up! It was dark green grass, thicker than your ass. What's up y'all? I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Nut. Thanks for coming back for yet another week. So this is my new bull here, Gilly. He is a 60 volt Toro Recycler 22 inch mower. And I figure I'm gonna put him through his paces today and see how he does. I'm sure you've seen at least one or two of the 1,283 videos that have been made about this mower this year. So I'm not gonna do anything to copy them or repeat what they've done. It's very easy for you to look through and find all the different features and things like that. What I'm gonna do today is give this thing a good workout in my thick, fat, overgrown St. Augustine grass over by here. This here is the Flora Tam. Don't worry, that there is a little bit of gray leaf spot. But you can see Flora Tam, nine days of growth, middle of summer, rain every other day. The reason it's overgrown is because I've been out of town. So it has been nine days since this was mowed. The biggest thing I'm gonna be looking for in today's review or overview is cut quality, but also battery life. And not by like battery runtime, because that doesn't mean anything, because all of us have to take breaks in between our mowing and things like that. It's really about how many square foot can I get done now. Again, we're super overgrown here, so this is gonna be under heavy load. And so I'm gonna see how many square foot can I get done on one charge, under heavy load. Now before we go getting too crazy, I just wanna say this was sent to me for free by Toro. I didn't pay for it. However, I did pay for all my other Toros, like this time cutter right here. I paid for this with my own cash money. And that super recycler right there, I paid for that one too. Actually, these two over here, these were given to me many years ago by Toro, so those those, yeah, I didn't pay for those. Either way though, I think it's pretty well known that I am the biggest Toro fanboy, at least amongst all the lawn care YouTubers that are out there. And rest assured, just because Toro sent me that for free, it doesn't mean I'm not gonna work it hard and tell you the truth about it. Isn't that right, boys? Nobody enjoys a free pass around here. All the bulls get ridden hard. Old Angus here, he gets ridden hard. Old DW, the double wide, he definitely gets ridden hard. I don't have a name for the time cutter yet, but I will tell you, that's the very first 2020 time cutter sold in the United States of America. But if you want to suggest a name, I'd really appreciate it. The reason I named this one here Gilly is because in case you didn't know, Toro is the bull. And, and in fact, it was originally called the Bull Tractor Company. And since this is mechanical in a sense or battery operated it, I named it after the mechanical bull in Gilly's Bar from the movie Urban Cowboy. So that's why it's called Gilly. If you haven't seen that movie, it's worth a watch. Good old John Travolta and an awesome soundtrack, including a Jimmy Buffett song. All right, so enough of that. Let's get going. Now, I've been charging the battery for about 55 minutes so far. Let's go see how fully charged it is or not. All right, so when it came, it had two bars already on it, and it's only up to three by now, so still taking a while to charge. I will just show you, if you care, these are the batteries that come with the regular 60 volt like that blower right there and as you guys know me i am definitely no ave and don't claim to be but i will say that this is uh the ones that come with the flex force tools like that there or like that uh that, that weed waker right there they are 2.5 amp hour batteries and the uh, one that came with the mower is a 7.5 amp hour battery but we're gonna see what the little ones do in the mower too, just for fun. So while I'm waiting on that, I'm gonna go ahead and do a little weed whack and edge and get, just get stuff cleaned up. And uh, I'm not gonna make you guys sit through all that because I know you wanna see that mower fighting the thick lawn, but here we go.
right, well, this is definitely different. Like, it doesn't feel like it's doing anything, but it's actually doing everything. So let's get in here and look at the cut. Now, again, I'm doing full overlap. I know you can hear that. I know you can hear that construction over there. Sorry, new sidewalks, but uh, there we go. I can tell you that that's about as good as the regular recycler would do, and I'll do comparisons of that later, but that's about as good as the regular recycler would do on overgrown St. Augustine grass. I didn't sharpen the blades, and you can see it came well sharpened. Those are nice clean cuts. So, yeah, that's pretty good. I'm, I'm very impressed, because you can see, come over here, look. Got some weeds in here, Lespedeza or something, but you can see, I mean, look at that. We are definitely breaking the one-third rule. You know, I'm known for that. I am known to break the one-third rule. And uh, this mower's chewing right through it. This is the thickest, fattest part of the floor tam also. So this would have been the hardest part for it to do. Okay, so I wanna try something. I still have this area through here that's uncut. I'm gonna go right up through the middle of it so it'll be a full width cut and I'm gonna go push as fast as I can all the way up through there and see if it can handle it. In other words, I'm gonna push it real hard and just see if it shuts off or if it can catch up. And then we'll see if that affects the cut too. Okay, so actually it held me up for the first half of the cut it was holding me up until it kicked into its overdrive or whatever they call it, and then it got faster through here. Kind of interesting. Let's take a look at the cut quality. So in here is where it was holding me up on the low drive. And then right here is where it kicked into high gear or high drive or whatever they call it. So I realize we're a little funky here. I'm kind of all over the place because I'm testing it. Now I'm just gonna go ahead and finish up the mow here and we'll see how much square footage we can get through with this. Okay, so I got this complete area finished and let's just see how it stripes. Now, St. Augustine grass isn't known to be a grass that really stripes. And uh, I messed my stripes up over here, but here you can see that's pretty good. That's no stripe kit. That's just the mower. This has a flap on the back of it. So again, you know, St. Augustine grass is not a stripety, stripety kind of grass, but this would do really well on your softer Kentucky bluegrass, perennial rye, turf type tall fescue for sure. Okay, so that's uh, 3,000 square feet down. Let's check and see where the battery's at. I still have more St. Augustine to do, but I want to do this zoysia before the battery does run out. Let's see. Okay, so we're down to two. So 50%. You know, just assuming that two is an exact 50%, I'm sure it's not, but so 3,000 square feet done. And I still have plenty of St. Augustine to do here, but I want to put it up against the zoysia. The zoysia is way overgrown for sure. Let me just show you. Look at it. She's thick and hairy, looking nice. Now, I know you see some bear spots in here. We'll talk about that in an upcoming video. I blame the lawn tools for this. This is what happens when they come to your house, so be warned. Actually, I want to take this down one notch. Zoysia is really supposed to be mowed down around two inches, and that's what I tell you guys to do, but just like you, I let it get away from me in the summer, so that's okay. You just have to bring it back to a manageable level towards the fall, but we're, we still got Plenty of August left and September really is summer here. So keep mowing it high for now. Okay, now for thick overgrown zoysia, for sure it's leaving these trails and uh, some occasional clumps and uh, but pretty much every mower well my super recycler doesn't 
but uh, my other mowers, they, they pretty much will leave a similar trail, my other walk behind mowers. Uh, but just to be thorough, I'm gonna go ahead and run the gas powered Recycler 22 inch, which is the same exact mower, just with a gas engine. I'm gonna run that through here and just show you that it cuts pretty much the same. I mean, essentially it's the same deck. So the only reason they would cut different is if this um, battery powered one was somehow or somehow underpowered or didn't get the same RPM or whatever. But I don't see any difference in the cut when it comes to this thick overgrown zoysia. Like I said, my motorized version does the same, but let's just run it through here to see. So same thing, you'll see some of the clumping there and it's just right where the overlaps are. Now I'm doing full width cuts. Usually I only overlap three quarters, but because I'm doing a test, I'm doing full overlaps. Um, I also almost always do a double cut on the zoysia. It's just, this is just a thicker grass. It's got a different growth habit, so it doesn't cut as easy. Even though the St. Aug over there is super thick, it's really just all blades. But here, because of the growth habit of zoysia, you can see you're cutting into blades, stems, a little of this, a little of that. There's just a lot more grass blades too, even though they're not as thick. It's just a more dense and a softer grass, and so therefore it just doesn't cut quite as well. But I just wanted to show you the battery and the... You even... I don't know if you heard, but this thing was even laboring a little bit. Now it's not warmed up, but still. Ugh. Okay, I hear you. All right, y'all, so that's where the battery died and I got 4,500 square feet done, right, right, right around there. Now remember, that was running on thicker grass, so probably if you're just running a normal cut, you might get 5,000 to 5,500 square feet out of one battery charge, that's just from my testing. Also, it didn't take a full hour to charge it the second time, so maybe, I don't know, the first charge maybe takes a little longer. It charges up in about 40, 40 to 45 minutes or so. Uh, the other thing is I did put the small battery in just to see what would happen. It does fit, but I barely got, you know, like 700 square feet cut with that. So the small batteries don't really work as a backup. You would definitely need, if you had a larger lawn than 5,000 and you weren't willing to wait, you're definitely gonna need an extra of the large batteries to make sure you have some sort of a backup there so that you don't have to stop and wait for a charge. So I came back here and this is the mower for, this is the battery for the mower and this is the one I just took out. I got barely a thousand square feet out of it so it's, it's barely a backup. But you see how these are on red? That means they're not charging. So that tells me they're too hot. There is a max temperature that they need to be at or they can't be at to be charged. So, I mean, this is Florida and and I, I'm out working in the heat, so I guess we'll have to wait till the evening time to mow. So as far as the quality on the mower, it cuts exactly the same as the recycler does, the regular gas-powered recycler, which would make sense. It's the exact same platform. That does not cut as good as the super recycler. Again, something you should expect, but it does cut as good as the recycler. And in fact, the battery-powered version actually powers through the thick grass better than the gas-powered version did, which was a surprise to me. For sure though, it's lighter and easier to handle. That's one of the things with the 22-inch recycler. It's a pretty heavy mower. Now, I mow with one arm a lot of the time because I'm filming. I think it's just the thing with most of us YouTubers. We mow with one arm most of the time because we're filming. So I just, that's where I noticed the weight difference is it's a lot easier to control this mower with one arm when you're filming. So take that for what it's worth, but it's definitely lighter and easier to maneuver. So for sure, if you're somebody that's been considering a battery powered mower or even the Toro, you're not gonna be sorry if you buy it. It works great. I was really pleasantly surprised that it did work that well. Uh, I'm a gas man all the way and uh, to find a battery mower that performs this well is really exciting to me and I'm gonna use this in the future. In fact, I have uh, my church project, I have a couple small areas that I have to mow by hand. I'll probably start taking it over there again just because it's easier and lighter to lift up in my truck. Now the last thing I wanna say is I have tested the Ego mower before and I've given that my endorsement. The Ego mower is great, but what mower would you like me to compare against that one? You guys tell me. Tell me which battery mower you would like to see me compare against that Toro, and I'll go get one of those, and that'll be a future video that I do. So leave that in the comments section below. With that, I'm Alan Hayne, the Lawn Care Note. Hope you guys have a great week, 
Thanks for watching, and I'll see you in a launch.